Hey, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be checking out this 300 amp hour 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery from a company called SunFun Kits, or SFK as I'll try to refer to them from here on out. So now I've reviewed a variety of batteries before and one comment that seems to come up with some degree of regularity is, hey, how about reviewing something that's made in America? So as it turns out, finding products like that uh, that are made in America is a little harder than you might think. But this battery actually is made in America and the guys who run SunFun kits are actually based in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And that's not just a P.O. box address that they, they made to make it look like they have a U.S. presence. Their facility is actually located in Baton Rouge. And yes, obviously they have to source materials for their products from outside the U.S. because that's just the reality of this day and age. But they build these batteries right here in the USA. And for our Canadian friends, yes, they do actually ship these to Canada as well. And by the way, they don't just make and sell pre-built batteries. Check out their website here. They actually sell battery kits that give you everything you need to build them yourself. They sell a variety of, you know, it could be battery cells and also a bunch of different accessories like cables, connectors, chargers, balancers, you know, BMSs, bus bars, disconnect switches, pretty much everything that you might need to build out your own system. All right, enough with the intro. You're going to want to strap in. We've got a lot of ground to cover on this battery. So as I said, this is a 300 amp hour, 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. And it has pretty much all the things. It's got low temp protection, high temp protection. It's got a built-in multi-mode heating system. And uh, we'll see how that works in a minute. And it's got an excellent mobile app that can connect you via Bluetooth to the uh, internal BMS. And you can actually make configuration changes to that BMS from the app. So it's not just a monitoring tool, though it is an excellent monitoring tool, as you'll see in a bit as well. Oh, and take a look at this user manual. This thing is a monster. This, this manual is bar none, the best manual for any product that I have reviewed. It is chock full of extremely helpful information, not just the battery's operating specs, but care and maintenance, full color pictures of common battery bank wiring configurations in parallel series or series in parallel, suitable applications for the battery, a detailed walkthrough of the SFK mobile app, and of course, information on their eight year warranty and that 10 to 12 year rated cycle life. All right, let's get to the pricing. This 300 amp hour heated battery is priced at just over $1,600. And yes, that is a lot of money, but hold on before you prematurely conclude that this SFK battery is more expensive than the competition. Keep in mind that for an apples to apples comparison, you're gonna to need to compare it to other 300 amp hour heated battery options. So for example, take a look at this 300 amp hour heated battery kit from Battleborn. You're reading that correctly. That is almost $3,000. But I can almost hear you saying right now, wait, everybody knows that Battleborn batteries are the most expensive ones. So how does it compare to a more budget-friendly brand? So take a look at this 100 amp hour self-heating battery from Renogy, for example. This is $639. So to get 300 amp hours, you need three of these. So multiply that number by three and you're all the way up to over $1,900. So yeah, $1,645 is a lot of money, but it's actually quite competitive in the heated battery space for something in this capacity range and SFK is actually an American company building these batteries right here in the US. All right, let's get to the testing on this thing. All right, one of the things I wanted to point out, 300 amp hour capacity. Each one of these is a 100 amp hour capacity battery. So all three of these together equal the capacity of just this one battery here from SFK. And if I turn this sideways, just so you can get a better sense for the, uh, the size. You know, it's not really any wider, it's just a little bit taller. This thing is just extremely dense, so it is packed full of four cells. In fact, they do a really good job here of uh, documenting everything about this battery, what the cell serial numbers are, the test results, the date of manufacture, uh, who the techs were who assembled it, and gives you the MAC address and the BMS ID. Everything that you need to know, including, including a QR code here, they do a really good job with documenting everything about this battery's assembly. But I think it's incredible that you can get all of this capacity into one small box this size. All right, let's take a look at the SFK app here. Go ahead and launch that. Notice in the upper right-hand corner before we scan that we're at version 5.0. They actually just updated the app since uh, 
actually a clip that I've already taken. So I thought I'd re-record this to show you what the updated app looks like. We'll acknowledge the little permissions here to go ahead and do the Bluetooth scan. It'll scan for the Bluetooth module in the BMS. And then if you have multiple SFK batteries, it'll list them in the device list. And you can choose which one in the list that you want to inspect or get further information on. So I've only got one here. And you can see I've named it my SFK 300 amp hour beast because it is a beast. So I'll check that and I will click connect. And again, it takes about uh, five or six or seven seconds here. And um, yeah, but you can see our state of charge is currently at 53.8%. Uh, I've got another 170.64 amp hours left. I've got a total of 12 cycle counts on this thing. You can see it's currently in a charging state. And we are actually pushing 314 watts, actually just dropped to 287. But you can see we can also see the case temperature and the BMS temperature inside. So uh, we are enabled for charging and discharging. And it shows me that the battery condition is normal. Let's take a look at details. You can see my cells are in pretty good balance there. Cell 4 has got a, well, actually, it just changed. So they're, they're pretty much all equal. I can look at amps. 22 amps, 15 amps, I can look at temperature. They just did a really nice job here in this app presenting information. So let's click on tools and see what we got there. Here's where you can actually set some parameters on the BMS, which is kind of cool. All right, you can give it a nickname at the top. I really like what they did with the interface here. It's actually much better than the version I was using just a couple weeks ago. But here's where I can, uh, under battery output, I could turn off the discharging right now if I wanted to and uh, prevent it from discharging and then you'd update that to send the change to the BMS. I can turn off or, or an enable low temp discharging. So default by default they've got it turned off so it's disabled but it's generally pretty safe to discharge these uh, down uh, to temperatures around negative 4 Fahrenheit uh, but you don't obviously want to charge them when you are uh, when you're in those kind of freezing temperatures. So um, you can see the low temperature heating uh, range there. I can set that in the in the BMS and turn that on from the app. And then I can set the low voltage cutoff. So if I want to get the maximum capacity out of this battery, I could dial this down to 10 volts and then update that. And then when I'm discharging, it has to send that change to the BMS. It'll reset that low voltage cutoff. I'm going to go ahead and put it back. I actually don't like to discharge at that low typically. Let me go ahead and update that. And then SFK has actually built in a really nice benchmarking tool. So if you really want to run your batteries through a test, you can go into benchmarking here and you can pick a, you know, a particular test here, charge or discharge, and you can click on begin. And what it'll do is it'll actually uh, write your, your uh, results to a file up in the cloud, and then you can go in and get that. So it's kind of neat that you can actually run tests like that um, and monitor them right here in the app, and then it saves the results uh, on, a, on a cloud drive. So um, pretty cool. All right, let's do some load testing on this 300 HP battery here from SFK. I've got my uh, Victron Smart Shunt over here to record all of the uh, all of the load that we're going to put on this and we're going to look at that on the app and I'll put that on screen for you. Now I'm going to use this Bouge RV 2000 watt uh, 12 volt AC inverter. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn on my disconnect here and switch the inverter to on. And I've got two oil heaters on the floor just out of the shot. And we're going to start applying load uh, with those. You can see already on the app that we're pulling just about 1 amp and 12 watts from the AC inverter. So we're going to see this battery is rated, uh, recommended for a maximum continuous load of about 1500 watts. Uh, the uh, typically, uh, I think, rate for 150 amps off the BMS, not to exceed 200 amps as a maximum. And then it should also be able to handle a surge uh, draw of about 2200 watts for up to about two minutes. So we're just going to just kind of see how this thing performs for us and make sure we can get at least that kind of performance out of it and just verify that those specs do apply. So let me go ahead and turn on the first space heater and we'll watch the effects of that. I'm going to go ahead and turn that one on high and you can see instantly we're reading 1600 watts and of course the AC inverter is now kicking on its fans so I apologize for the extra noise all right so we're pulling 126 amps so I'm going to start the next 
uh, oil heater down here, but I'm not going to put it on high just yet. I want to see if I just put it on sort of medium and see what I get. All right, so we're pulling 195 amps right there and 2390 watts. So we're already exceeding the uh, recommended max here by about 180 watts. We're going to let this go for a minute or so just to make sure we get a high output surge support for a reasonable period of time. All right, it has been a little over a minute there. I'm pretty sure I would have sped the video up leading up to this, just so you didn't have to wait for that uh, in real time. Yeah, we are consistently getting just under that 200 amp uh, maximum limit there, and it has not cut us off. It is allowing us to pull 2,300, almost 2,400 watts continuous here for well over a minute, uh, probably getting close to two minutes. All right, I think we can call this load test a definite pass. So let's go have some more fun. All right, let's do a capacity discharge test on this battery. Now I've got the SFK app running here on a tablet, and they've actually got a mode called Benchmark where I can start a benchmark. I'm actually going to do this with my new battery tester as well and uh, find out. It's got an extra set of leads going that just uh, m measure the voltage rather than apply the current. So it's supposed to give me a little bit more accurate overall watt hour capacity reading because it's not affected by voltage changes as much. And uh, we're going to just kind of see how all this works. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing going here. I've already got the positive lead connected. I've got the negative lead connected. I'm reading 14.38 volts on my tester. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, begin the test here. All right, we can see here we're pulling 11 and a half amps and 160 plus watts. So this is going to take a while with a 300 amp hour battery for sure. But we'll check back when it's done and find out what our actual capacity ended up being. All right, the capacity test is finally complete. Let's take a look at the uh, SFK app here. And you can see that it is showing us 4,173.7 watt hours extracted out of this battery. Now that's data coming right off of the BMS. So it's going to be a little higher than what we got on the battery tester. But let's, uh, let's move down here and see what the battery tester actually shows. You can see that we got 4,064.3 watt hours out of the battery tester. So outstanding capacity performance on this SFK battery. All right, let's take a look at how the heating function works on this 300 HP. You can see there's a big uh, rubber button here on the top and there are modes one through five and you can initiate this by long pressing the button. You can see that mode one has lit up. Now modes one through three are basically continuous heating modes and then four and five are timed heating modes. So on mode one, uh, this is probably, they call this eco mode. This is probably the mode you would use most often. And this tries to keep the internal battery temperature between 65 and 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you just single click again, short press, uh, mode two is going to give you a bit more warming and set that target temperature between 70 and 75 degrees. And again, this is continuous until you turn it off. And you probably only need this for more exceptional cold circumstances. Um, mode 3 is going to take that internal temperature target and try to hold it between 86 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. This is probably more suitable for just intentionally uh, warming the battery up and uh, maybe trying to discharge the battery because this will discharge your battery fairly aggressively on mode 3. So modes 4 and 5 are basically the same as mode 1 except instead of being continuously charged, uh, mode 4 will try to hold the temperature between 65 to 68, uh, but shut off after 12 hours. And then mode 5 does the same thing, same target temp, but it shuts off after 24 hours. So if you just don't want to have to worry about it and you want to uh, make sure that it doesn't keep discharging, you can use mode 4 and 5 for that. So again, mode 1 is probably the most common use. Let me go ahead and long press to turn off the heating function entirely. So. Let's go set up a test and just kind of see for ourselves what would happen if we set, say, a uh, ambient temperature of about 20 degrees Fahrenheit and we set this on mode one and kind of just get a sense for how much 
amp hours it actually does consume uh, on an hourly basis. All right, I've got this battery in the freezer here and I've got the set point at 20 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see we're down to 30 degrees Fahrenheit, mostly because the uh, thermal mass of this battery is taking this a while to actually cool down. Uh, but if we take a look at the app here, you can see that the internal temperature here in the BMS is almost 52 degrees, same for the case temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on warming, and we should see that reflected here in the amps because we are already below the set point. Yeah, so we're drawing nine amps, about 120 watts. And once we get up to around 70 degrees or so, it should start cycling and maintaining that temperature. Uh, notice we have 116.56 amp hours remaining. That's the starting point. So we'll check again in, uh, I don't know, eight hours or so, and we'll see how many amp hours we have left. And uh, that'll give us a sense for uh, how this thing continues to consume power in an effort to maintain that target set point temperature. All right, it has been pretty much exactly eight hours. You can see the thermometer down here is reading 32 degrees. And if we look at the app here, you can see we're currently reading 75 degrees at the BMS uh, and just a little over 73 degrees on the case temperature. So it's doing its job uh, at holding its target temperature here and we have remaining 84.72 amp hours. So I'll have to go do some math and figure out uh, how much we used on average per hour over this eight hours. So we started that test at a little over 116 amp hours and we ended it with a little over 84 amp hours, eight hours later. So that's about four amp hours per hour consumed when in heating mode one in an approximate 20 degrees Fahrenheit ambient environment. And speaking of heating, for extra protection, if you happen to be using this battery in really extreme cold environments, SFK has uh, and recommends these insulated battery jackets. They are super heavy duty. They're lined with Reflectix and insulation. And they even got these grommet holes so you can just uh, kind of feed your battery cables right through there and keep it all zipped up and protected from the cold. They even have an active heated version of this that is basically the same heating system that you find here on the 300 HP. And uh, so that's pretty simple to as a heating alternative if you're using a battery that doesn't have a built-in heating system. All right, let's jump back in and take a look at the inside of this battery. And uh, along the way, we'll test the high and low temp disconnect protections. I don't often get inside the case because I'm not a big fan of destructive testing. Uh, I don't really like tearing the batteries apart just in an effort to look inside. Now in this case, uh, this is pretty user uh, serviceable. I think these are, I'm not sure if they're metric, but I know a, uh, a 3.30 seconds Allen wrench will do the trick. So we're going to carefully take this top off, see what's inside, and maybe we can test the low temperature disconnect and the high disc, uh, temperature disconnect in the course of that. Let me just go ahead and loosen these up. All right, as far as I'm aware, those are the only four screws I need to worry about. Let's see if this top comes off here. Yeah, it actually does. Lifts off pretty nicely. Looks like they almost use like a 3D printer for all these brackets. This is obviously the BMS I'm looking for. Uh, these are our temperature connectors, most likely. There's two of them for the case, and there's one of them for the uh, battery cells. Here's a temperature probe right here. I think we can get that out. Yeah, yeah, they've got little wire tie downs and stuff all the way around here. This is just done very well. You can see that they have not uh, cheaped out on this at all. All right, so let me go ahead and connect my battery charger. All right, so you can see here in the app that it shows that we are actually charging at 19 amps, about 249, 250 watts. So let's find out if the over temp or high temp cutoff works as designed. We'll go ahead and get the BMS temperature sensor here and just keep our eye on if it stops charging or not. So we hit 123 and it's already stopped. So jumped up to 187, so we must have hit that maximum temp pretty quick there, which I think is around 130 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll have to double check that. But you can see it went into standby mode and it stopped charging. So I'm going to let this cool down, see if it auto recovers. Actually, 
it just auto recovered. So high temp disconnect definitely works. All right, so I have uh, got some crushed ice here to give me a little more ice surface area. Let me get that down in there. I think I can bring that temperature down a lot quicker. Let's see what that does. 35 degrees, 32.99, then we've gone into standby. Let me see if it auto recovers here. 37 degrees, 40 degrees, and we are charging again. So low temperature cutoff definitely works, and it works quickly. All right, so before I forget to mention it, SFK supports up to a maximum of four of these batteries in either series or in parallel. And the manual points out that within a single four battery bank, you can set up a 2S2P configuration that gives you 24 volts at uh, 600 amp hours. But if you need something higher than 24 volts, say 36 or more likely 48 volts, you can't parallel batteries within that same four battery bank without exceeding that four battery limit. So if you need more capacity, you just need to create additional series banks at the desired 36 or 48 volts, and then connect them to common bus bars in parallel. Making sure, of course, that all the bus bars and cabling is appropriately rated for the very high current potential. So I think this battery is extremely well suited for people looking to upgrade sprinter vans and RVs where you know, space is limited, but you wanna get as much capacity into that space as possible. And SFK manages to pack 300 amp hours into such a small form factor because they're using EV certified grade A cells in this product. And they document everything about these cells used in each battery. So you can have the confidence that it's all on the up and up. So if you're in the market for a top quality, high capacity battery option that is literally in the smallest form factor currently available, you should go check these guys out. They're a big enough company to be a major player in this space, but they're also small enough that they value every one of their customers. And so their customer service is also top notch. So hey, if you found this video helpful at all, please consider clicking that like button. I would really appreciate that. I know this video was a little bit long, so thanks for sticking with me. If you have any questions that I didn't answer, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to, to uh, follow up on those with you. Anyway, thanks for joining me for this video and I do hope you'll be back for the next one. Until then, have fun out there.